Hello friends, in this video series, we will discuss the all topic of Java. So basically, we will discuss about the core Java and today's topic is object oriented concept. So object oriented concept is something different which is basically relate the program with the real life and what is an object if we are talking about the object so object is a real world entity so it can be a real world entity means it can be a daily uses things like table chairs and other stuff so basically the four pillar of object oriented programming is this if a programming language supports these four features then we can say that this is an object oriented programming so together this four is called four pillar of object oriented programming so the first thing is that encapsulation then abstraction polymorphism and inheritance first talking about the encapsulation encapsulation means binding code and data together so any program other than the object oriented programming the code part and the data part remain separate if I write a code in C, this is int main and then I have declared two variable int a equals to 10 and b equals to 20 another variable I declare as result. Then if I write res equals to a plus b. So this is our simple addition program in C language in C language the code part and the data part so this is our data part and this is the code part so this data part and code part remain separate so there is the, that's why the C does not support encapsulation this is the code in C if I write the same code in Java in Java the first and preliminary things is class so first talking about something on class so class is a blueprint of your program like your home you are going to design a house then first of all the blueprint is made and according to the blueprint the whole house will be structured similarly your program have a blueprint and these blueprints provided by the class and now the class have a user defined type like structure so I can give any name as class so a is a type of class now in C programming I know I hope you all know about the structure so what is an structure in C so structure is a user defined type where heterogeneous data types are club together what is heterogeneous so in a structure we can put a integer we can put a floating point or the real number or we can put some arrays also there so if I define a structure like structure student and here I am right int roll and then I write care name name is 20 so this is a structure so where we can club the heterogeneous data type so role is an integer and this is an character array or rather we can say a string now basically class is the extended version of the structure so what I say class is an extended version of structure so in structure what we can do we have learned that we can it can support the heterogeneous element together but in class these features is also there it can support heterogeneous element but how we can distinguish between the class and the structure in structure only the data are supported okay in structure only we can define data we does not provide any kinds of methods or function 
or rather we can say code within the structure it does not support but in class we say that it is an extended version of structure which can be coupled with the data part which can be coupled with the data part as well as the code part that is the function or java the function we say that it is method now i write that int a equals to 10 b equals to 20 and another variable i have create int result and i have defined a method that i have already told that it supports the method so void add method okay and within add, add method we are creating the sum between a plus b and after that i am going to print the result so what is the print command this is system dot out dot print ln and within this i have defined the result to print the result after that every program have a main so in java main is public static void main and we have pass a string type argument so this is string args so the argument java supports that is array of strings so args is the name of the array this args is the name of the array and the type is string and this symbol defines that this is an array now within this what we can do we can create the object so object is created of the class so a how to create the object a is the class name and this is the object reference a obj equals to new a okay so what is the utility of the new operator the utility of the new operator is that it's allocate memory dynamically so object we have created and after that we write the obj dot the method that we have created that is the add method and our program is done this is the end of class and this is the end of main now what is the object previously i told the definition of the object is that object is the collection of code and the data so what is our code the code part is that address this is our code part and data is that these are my data so if we just see the internal representation of the obj the object so here we have a equals to 10 b equals to 20 and raise and most important part add is there so together we are binding code plus data so here is nothing but code plus data so this is called encapsulation this is called encapsulation okay i hope everybody understand what is the encapsulation in object oriented programming you can write down the definition also so encapsulation is a mechanism by which we can bind our code and data together understand <clears throat> next is abstraction so abstraction in abstraction So abstraction is basically hiding something and only showing some of the features. So just take a real life example. Whenever we are driving our car, we are not able to understand or we are not interested to understand what are the complexity of the car. Rather, it can be giving an abstract view with brake, brake class and gear. With these three brake, class and gear, we can drive our car. 
but we don't know what is the mechanical complexity behind this brake clutch and accelerator now similarly your programming the abstractions provide our abstraction is basically hiding the complexity and provide some of the functionality that is useful so for this instance you just understand what is abstraction and how we can achieve abstraction is java it will be discussed on the latter video series second one is polymorphism polymorphism these two words one is poly another one is morph so morph is nothing but the form so and poly means we every know everybody know that is many so if something have the many forms then we can say that it is polymorphism so what will be the basically many forms a function or the rather we can say a method a method i am writing in the previous example that is void at so it does not putting any argument so this is a no arc method if i write a same name method at with two argument and in text and in y so basically the method name are same so both are add but the difference is that the first method does not support any argument and second methods have to put two argument to make it work now if we write the two same name function in c it not supported in c there will be error will come that function redefine error that means you have write a function like add again you are redefine the same name function with different parameters so c does not supports but java allows this now the question is what is the benefit of this polymorphism the main benefit you can say that you can using the same name function multiple times so the most important benefit is that suppose you are writing a code with a function like calculating the tax so suppose you are calculating the tax a function you have created uh, calculating the tax after few months you think that the tax requirement is changes from the government side but what you can do you can take the same name function without deleting the previous one and you just put a different parameters with the tax so whenever we are going to calculate the tax with the new rule then we will call this function and if we want the want to calculate the tax with the previous rule then we will go for the this tax so basically this will help you to reuse the code or we cannot delete something in the code now how this polymorphism happens and we will see it later now see some of the important question that is asked in the campusing so first question is asked in campusing that is what is the impact of the polymorphism in the real life so they does not want what are the code behind that so this is important for your university examination but in case of campusing or in case of campus recruitment they wants the real life example what is the poly why polymorphism needed so i am giving a real life example that is previous method is able to calculate the tax with the previous rule and the new method will calculate the tax of the current rule so both are eligible for that so basically in the campus recruitment site you need to give some of the example in the real life then only they were convinced with your interview now last one is that inheritance now inheritance is a popular features that is mainly used for code reusability 
sorry code reuse so how we can reuse the code if i write some code with some of the program suppose this is for code 1 to solve problem 1 i write another code with solve problem 2 now the things happen i am giving an example if you are calculating the perimeter of a rectangle so what is the perimeter perimeter of rectangle so perimeter of rectangle is nothing but 2 into length plus width so this is your code 1 which can be able to calculate the perimeter of the rectangle now in the code 2 you are going to calculate that what is the cost what is the cost of the boundary of a place so place is a rectangular place and you second code is to need to calculate the cost of the boundary so if this is your total area suppose 20 meter by 40 meter you need to calculate the what is the cost to become a boundary with bricks now to calculate the what is the cost you need to provide so you need to calculate the perimeter of the area then only you can find the cost of the boundary by the bricks then what you can do you can take some features of the previous code to the new code so basically that is the inheritance so in inheritance the one code is sharing some of the features to another code so this code is called the parent parent or this code is called as child or this code is called as super and this code is called as sub so this is the basically what inheritance happens and what is the impact of inheritance in the object oriented programming so basically these types of question is coming in the campus recruitment also for inheritance you need to always give a real life example to make them convince thank you